Hawkstone Park. It's a dramatic and historic landscape park in Shropshire with many sites and follies to explore. The Red Castle was the first castle at Hawkstone Park and it was built in 1227 by Henry de Audley, Sheriff of Shropshire and Staffordshire. Now this Norman enclosure castle was built of sandstone on a natural outcrop of rock flanked by valleys all round. Sadly the site of the Red Castle is closed to the public because it's unsafe which is a shame because that's what I went to see. But I wasn't that disappointed, there's plenty else to see. It takes up the top of uh, Red Castle Hill to the Wesley outcrop. The Red Castle was held by the family until the early 16th century initially and it was their main Shropshire stronghold. Now it was uh, Roland Hill, or the Great Hill as it was known, who bought the estate in 1556. And he was the publisher of the Genevieve Bible, which is said to be a historically significant translation of the Bible into English. And it preceded the King James Version by 50 odd years. And it was used by William Shakespeare, Oliver Cromwell, one of the Bibles was taken to America on the Mayflower. Now this is the Roland Hill, landscaped the Red Castle and extended the estate with walks over the four natural hills and a wide range of follies, including a hermit who dispensed wisdom to the visitors. Now it was a second baronet who took over in 1783 who commissioned a man-made lake with most of the walks and most of the follies including the Swiss bridge and the hundred foot obelisk with an internal staircase which I'll show you and it was topped by a statue of the original Sir Rowland Hill and by 1808 it had become one of Britain's top attractions but later the park endured a century of neglect and decay until a programme of restoration was started in 1990 which enabled it to be reopened in 93. It was also used as a prison of war camp during World War II and today the park consists of a uh, hundred acres of follies, landscape parkland, grounds and rocky outcrops based around the ruins of the medieval Red Castle. There's also an adaptation of C.S. Lewis's Chronicles of Narnia filmed here. I'd estimated to take three hours hikings to tour each folly and its landscapes completely. And there are many steps ups and downs and that so it's not easy going. And there are plenty of caves, tunnels through the rocks, walkways, viewpoints, some amazing viewpoints, and trails winding through the rhododendron plantation. Now the area is associated with the Arthurian story of the giants Tarquin and Tarquinus. They are said to have owned the Red Castle with their brother Sir Carados who was the one who captured Sir Gawain yeah. and Sir Lancelot and Tristan of the Round Table set out to rescue their friend. Now they encountered Sir Carados carrying Sir Gawain bound and tied across his saddle and after a legendary fight Sir Lancelot killed the giant at a place called Kilgard near Western Church and he freed Sir Gawain and King Arthur is said to have later addressed his knights in the caves which exist on the parkland and there is a legend that one of the caves at Oxton Park was a burial ground of King Arthur. Folklore says that the Holy Grail was actually in the grotto caves at Oxton Park and this is associated with an early Roman scent jar which was found under a sculpture of an eagle 
when the sculpture broke in the 1920s. Now this is a monument I mentioned earlier, commonly known as the monument. And it's a column built in to about 110 feet and it's commemorating Sir Roland Hill, the, the guy who did the Genevieve Bible. And he was also the first Protestant mayor of London. Now, apparently the statue on top is a modern replacement of the original 18th century statue. And it depicts Sir Robert Hill and he's holding a copy of the Magna Carta. The statue is a copy from an ancient monument from London, the Church of St Joseph's at Walbrook, I think it was. Like I say, it's over 100 foot tall and there's 150 steps, I know, because I counted them. And the spiral staircase column goes all the way up and on a clear day visitors can see up to 13 counties from the top, it's rumoured. Throughout the 17 and 1800s, many plants and trees were brought in from around the world and many were planted along the terraces, providing shelter from the hot sun and rain. Nowadays, the terraces Arboretum contains a forest of rhododendrons. Now this is a Swiss bridge, it's like a rustic bridge designed as part of a scene from Switzerland. Luckily the, the rusty rotten bit has been replaced and rebuilt in the 1990s. Here we come to the grotto. No surprise this was. A series of caves and passages excavated in the soft sandstone. Oh, this is cool. Literally. A local legend suggests that this, along with a shaft in the nearby Castle Hill, were Roman copper mines. Now the discovery of a Roman villa and uh, Hammer and Pick at Auxton are not thought to be conclusive evidence for Roman mining. And more recent discoveries of pre-Roman materials a few miles south of here that bronze weapons have been found, so the site could have been an early British fort or lookout. But it is pretty certain that in the 5th century it was a copper mine and it contained elaborate decorations which included shells, fossils and coral and ore encrusted walls with coloured glass on its windows. Sadly most of this was lost during the war.
Now many people miss out the details due to the low lighting, including carved arches, tree trunks and even faces in the walls. So definitely bring a torch, probably a better one than I had. And today it's often used as a wedding venue and a Santa's Grotto. Now there was a few places we missed, it was quite a trek, but there's a hermitage which is very interesting, it's once a home to a venerated barefoot father France. There's a raven shelf which is an outcrop of rock giving incredible views over Shropshire and Wales, and I'm sure there were more so it's well worth a trip, I'd recommend it. But it was this one that intrigued me. I like my standing stones, but I couldn't find anything at all about this. It's like it don't exist. But it does look ancient. If anybody knows anything, let me know, please. <laughs> 